Welcome back to video six in this professional trader training course. Imagine needing to learn how to lose money. Crazy? Actually, no, not crazy at all. In this video, you're going to learn about a little known secret that every successful trader knows about and uses. You will learn the real power of a stop loss, which is not what you think it is. There is also a twist in this video as we bring in something that will enable you to always remember what to do and when. What is that thing? Well, look out for the love movie concept because that will cause a light bulb moment for sure. Let's get on with it. Stop loss orders. Now, stop loss orders, very important. They prevent us from losing um, huge amounts of money. For example, we wouldn't want to just buy a market without having a stop loss for an emergency period that, uh, sorry, for an emergency position because if the market starts to go against us, it could empty your trading account. So stop loss in that point perspective, we do need to use stop loss orders. Um, there's another great way to use them in a minute, which we'll, which we'll get to in a moment. But, um, okay, so the perception and the reality. The perception uh, is that they just stop, they, they stop losses. And there's part truth in that, they will prevent from unlimited losses. And um, for those of you who don't know about stop losses, that's going to be on the on the on the basic uh, DVD. But uh, basically, a market is going to you know by putting a stop loss in, we are preventing uh, an unlimited loss. The reality is they can actually be an accumulating device, because if market makers deliberately move a market to trigger stop loss orders, even though they're not going to go in that direction ultimately, remember by triggering, supposing that they're accumulating buy orders. I'll give you a little example here. Uh, you've uh, you've bought. At this level, you bought at this level here, and here is your stop order down here, stop loss, and that's to prevent you. The market is down. You're only going to lose this amount between here and here. You've bought down here. Stop loss is underneath here. Now, if the market makers know the direction of the market and they want me to accumulating uh, sell orders, then the market can be going up a little bit, driven back down, trigger that, and what happens is that you sell. Sorry, they're accumulating buy orders. Your, sell, your stop is becomes a sell order, market is driven down, picks up your sell order which is bought and then the market gets into an up move. So stop losses can be used as an accumulation device as well. And they're also a keep playing uh, device. Some slot machines, poker machines, one-armed bandits, they have payout rules. Payout rules are the facade. The reality is they keep playing rules. If a machine had payout rules and you just um, you know, you just put your money in and it just took your money, took your money, took your money, and never paid out, people wouldn't play these machines. Even though we know you can never win on these machines, because only people that win are the tax man and the own machine owner, the casino, that uh, will not stop people pretending, uh, sorry, playing these machines. And they even develop uh, lucky wrist movements to uh, affect the wheels inside on them. But if that machine never paid out, people wouldn't play. So the, the rules they have, the payout rules, are actually keep playing rules. It allows you to keep playing because it drips, drip, 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 comes crack. And uh, about, a, about a three to one uh, ratio of hail, in, not in your favour. Okay, so the way in which we need to, to be aware of this is by keeping our mind connected to the box. If we can keep connected to this box, we keep understanding and keep monitoring this box, were they accumulating? Ask the question, were the market makers accumulating buy orders or were they accumulating sell orders? By keeping our mind connected to the box, we can utilize and work out where stops are being taken and that will reveal to us uh, information uh, later on that we can use to quite devastating effect. How to lose. You know, I think possibly one of the um, most valuable lessons I learned as a trader in my early years when I started to get this, when I started to understand what was really going on here, the three phases, you know, you know, accumulation, manipulation, profit release. Once I started to understand that and once I started to, they started to become more clear, let us say, because when I first got this, it was a bit like misty stuff, you know, it was like you're looking through, there's a mist there, you know there's something there, but you just can't find it. And then it took months and months of work to, to clear that mist and understand it and bring it down to a very clear, something that's very clear, total clarity about what you're seeing and what you're doing. And 
one of the things, obviously, going through that, obviously, I was in, you know, I was winning and I was losing, I was winning and I was losing, and gradually that was changing. So it became was much more winning, much more, and then winning very big, and then losing very little, and so the the, the whole process sort of went on this sort of curve, this equity curve, if you like, going up like this. But during that time, obviously, there were losses, and one of the most important things I learned is how to lose. I had to really question about it because no, let's face it, nobody likes to lose. You know, people may say, oh, your losses are on the way to getting the wins you know but it, it doesn't really cut any ice because you know nobody likes to lose so what we need is a specific set of losing rules and some of them are in, are in here but you know we do need a specific set of losing uh, rules. now first off it's totally normal you know don't try and eradicate the from your trading the, the sense of loss or something that you will feel as a sense of loss because let's face it it's a it's a it's a very very real thing loss avoidance we don't want to lose anything you know, whether it might be down to our wallet losing anything, or we don't want to have a deal with somebody, or do with somebody. You know, you, you can even get to an argument point. There's a, there's a point where you have an argument, and you don't want to lose the argument, even though if you know you're wrong, and you shouldn't be defending your position, you don't want to. So loss avoidance is a whole wide spectrum, and something that you know we need to really consider when we're trading. Uh, okay, so accept that that is totally natural. Word association. Now I've got this up here because I hear so many traders talk about oh, my stop was hit, uh, you know, and and they use like these painful words as if uh, it's in, 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 inflicting some sort of personal injury. And in many cases, it is because the re well the reason it inflicts the personal uh, feeling is because when it's when you don't know, it's when you take a loss and you don't know. You think you know. Okay, stop me out. You, you think you know because it's gone against your system, whatever, but you don't really know. If you really knew why you'd been stopped out, in other words, if you knew that, okay, I actually attached myself at the wrong stage of the phase here, uh, but I can actually see where that phase is now, you, you won't feel the same about that loss. It won't be that. It'll be a loss, it'll, and it'll be really a further amount of information that you can then carry forward, okay? So what's your word associations? It's nothing to do with getting hit or, you know, beat up on the other markets, beating me up again, and that sort of thing up there. Acceptance, you've got to accept the fact that you are going to attach yourself so at the wrong point. So you are going to be stopped out, you are going to encounter losses. This is not you personally, don't take it personally. It's the market maker is, is uh, going off on a route, you may attach yourself at that. As the market goes off in this particular direction, the market maker sees that there are some more stops to be picked up, somebody else is coming with a big order, there's a big stop loss down there, and the market will run off quickly down, pick those up, and then the market goes away. So again, don't take this, uh, this personal. Uh, use the loss. You know, use this loss to your great advantage. If you, you know, don't sort of lick your wounds, as it were, and say, okay, well, I was stopped out on this particular trade. Why was I stopped out? Well, well not because your stop was just, you know, don't think, oh, I should have had a bigger stop, or, oh, my stop was in the wrong position there, or all that sort of thing. Because you, it's easy to look at the chart and say, oh, if I just had my stop down there, then the market wouldn't have done that, and it would have gone off. That's a, that is looking from the outside in. You need to be saying, okay, well, I had my stop there, I was stopped out there, why was I stopped out? Okay, well, there's the phase, accumulation, manipulation, okay, profit release cycle. Ah, okay, well, I can see what's happened here. There was actually another leg of manipulation here. Then we got into the profit release, right, now I can see why I got stopped out. Now you have complete understanding, you're educating yourself, your mind's feeling comfortable about that, and then you'll be free to then move on and trade and get yourself attached to that, that market maker model. And finally, I've got in there creating a chair. A little bit uh, off on there. I'm not, not a car, by the way, but uh, uh, creating a chair. And the reason I put this on is just to remind me and to tell you, uh, you know, explain a little thing to you here that, you know, if I said to you, um, I want you to uh, create a chair. Now, regardless of whether you were a good carpenter or a bad carpenter, I presume, you know, pretty much you could knock it up on a bit of wood or whatever, but you could create this chair and it would be a finished thing. And it might only be, as I say, a very uncomfortable chair, but whatever, it doesn't matter. But you create this chair. Now, once it's created, um, so you put your energy into it, you've created the chair, and there sits the chair. Your trading needs to be treated in the same way. The, 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 the chair is an individual creation. You created it, but it becomes individual from you. It becomes separate from you. You're not connected to that anymore. And this is exactly the same that what I want you to do with your trading. When you put a trade on, that position, you enter that position into the market, it exists as a creation separate of you. You don't become attached to it on a personal thing, a personal level whatsoever. You're just making this as a creative act. There's your, there's your, there's your creative act. 
that's my act, that's my limping onto the market maker's model at that point there, and it exists, it exists separate of you. You're only there really to monitor it on there. So don't get dragged in and like, it's like permanently being sitting on a chair or permanently making the chair and never finishing it. You know, this is separate, uh, separate from you, a separate creation and each trade has to be treated in that way. Okay, so when you think about it, trading, it's a movie. It's, that's what it is. It's got a beginning, it's got a middle, and it's got an end. And uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a love movie. Let's take a let's take a standard uh, love movie. You know, we sort of get an idea of the plot maybe from the DVD cover on there. The movie uh, starts going through, and the plot starts to be revealed. You know, boy gets girl, girl gets boy. Everybody happy ever after. Uncover the plot. Invariably, what we get is that twist through the movie. Uh, Two thirds into the movie, we get that twist. Twist. All is lost. Uh, it's the end of the world, the relationship's not going to come off, uh, this other uh, girl's come in from wherever, everything's blown out of proportion, and we're left hanging, what is going to happen? There's twist in there. And then eventually the twist is resolved, and then we get this very predictable outcome, boy gets girl, girl gets boy, everybody's happy. Beginning, middle, and end. And we can take this back to the market, we have the plot on here, we have the twist, which is the manipulation, and then we have the very, very predictable outcome of the profit release phase. Profit release phase is always going to happen, and that's the phase that we're after trading, but simply trading the market maker's uh, business model. The real power of the stop loss order. The stop loss order can be the harvesting, so it can be an extra accumulation of factor, okay, very, very important. And the taking of harvesting of stops, it confirms, it, it tells us something. It tells us something very, very important. If we can spot stop taking, which is actually a harvesting exercise of accumulating more buys, accumulating sales, suddenly we are placed into an extremely powerful situation. Because at that point, what the market makers have done to us by trading their model, they have revealed their hand. By taking those, accumulating that last few, we've accumulated, they've revealed their hand, and now their move, which will be a default move, think about this, if they've accumulated buy orders to sell later, there can only be a one way the market is going to go. It's going to go up. It's a default move. If they've accumulated sell orders, it's going to be a default move down, which means if we understand the business, the market maker's business model, we attach ourselves to that model and we trade that model, when they go into their profit release phase, which is a default, we make money by default. And that is extremely powerful trading. The market maker's guiding hand. Before we move on from stock taking, it's worth exploring at the why, when and where they are placed. First, traders are trained where to put stop loss orders by following the same patterns as the 95%. Highs, lows, retraced areas, support and resistance levels, pivot points, and so the list goes on. The truth is that these traders are guided on where to place stop loss orders by the market makers, creating familiar patterns. In this example, you can see that the market starts to move up from the accumulation box area, gets up to level A, and then starts heading towards C. On the way to C, traders will place stops just above the high at A, thinking they have now secured a, trading, secured a successful trade in the downward moving market. At the point of C, these traders are on a euphoric high and start to count their winnings. Then the rise back up to B, and the euphoric high starts to melt into dismay. Change of plan for this trader. Now the idea is that C has become a confirmed support level, and now the market will break above the high at A and continue north. Our trader buys at B, which has been nothing more than a stop harvesting exercise by the market makers. By the time this move really starts, really gets underway, the trader is often so bruised from losses, they will not even be able to enter the market again out of fear. So why has all this happened? Because the trader was trading the facade, the form of the chart presented to him or her by the market makers. The market makers literally extended a guiding hand to show the trader where to place their stop loss orders, which then allows the market makers to head off and harvest them ready for the final phase, which will be their own profit release. If this trader had been correctly trained in the market makers business model, he would not only be in a position of not suffering losses, but could have also used the market makers guiding hand to actually trade the manipulation move itself and thus profit greatly whilst others were needlessly losing. What is accumulation again? It's the act of collecting together a quantity of buy or sell orders, depending on which way the market makers are going to eventually profit release, that can then later be released into that move. 
Accumulation methods will vary, but with training and a little time studying this activity, you'll soon have a smile on your face as you start to see the entire plan for this next move sort of unfold before you. Okay, so an accumulation summary. Accumulation is an ongoing market maker activity. The market makers will set up situations that assist their accumulation, like providing convenient and clear levels at which to place stop loss orders so they can later harvest them. And the accumulation is, is not fixed. It will come oh, sorry, it will come to an end when the accumulation process is complete. The next thing we need to understand is manipulation. Manipulation. Now, there are many different guises of manipulation. In no particular order they take place in the main in, in the main accumulation area. Now I've shown this accumulation area on the slide as a box like shape with sort of limited price movement up or down. In the breakaway area from this box, you can see the actual profit release phase and also the stop take areas. Now that's a lot of areas, right? Well, yes it is, and the reason for this is because the market makers are always thinking ahead. They know where there is supply and demand and they will accumulate for that when they can. Now, okay, so if this accumulation is going on all the time, where does that leave you? In a pretty vulnerable position, right? Well, yes and no. If you're trading patterns or bar formations or moving averages, etc., which is, as you know, from the, this is the form the chart takes, then your mind is literally going to be dragged around, taking note of every small change in market direction. And this dragging of your mind around the charts causes you to feel confused and bewildered by what to do and when to do it. It's at this point you become highly vulnerable to pattern recognition. Now, as you become more confused, so your mind will start to scan wider and wider in the search for familiarity. And the very moment it sees something it will, that it lock, likes, it will lock onto that. That's it. And now you will probably already know it's going to be a pattern or an individual bar. Success. You've been manipulated into taking action and probably at the very worst time. This reminds me of an experiment when in a busy city centre someone stops and starts staring upwards and someone else looks and someone else. And the person started this then walks away but people keep looking to the sky expecting to see something. These people have been given a belief that there is something to look at that simply does not exist. However, whether it exists or not is irrelevant to what is really going on and that is the manipulation of your beliefs for trading purposes. Beliefs, the beliefs that centre around trading purposes. This looks familiar, water's good, water's fine, come on in, others are doing it, so it must be right. Now let's explore this social proof, but add in the fear of loss. Fear of loss and social proof. And what you see here is a classic market maker move that lures traders into a sideways trap. Now clearly this could not happen every time because if it did then traders would eventually stop trading anything that had the appearance of this type of setup. Generally speaking, if you're trading the form the chart takes then the odds are always 3 to 1 in the market maker's favour, which is why so many traders fail. In a way it's like the casino where the house always wins over time. However, even in casinos there are those who win consistently enough to upset the casino owners. Now by trading the market maker's method you will flip that 3 to 1 so that it's in your favour. And in doing so you can make a great deal of money in a relatively short period of time. So let's get to the fear of loss, or in this example, fear of losing out. As markets start to move in a given direction, they will of course attract the attention of traders. By the time the market reaches plus one in this example, traders will start to develop the belief this is going to be worth buying into. By the time it reaches plus two, they'll start to feel they're losing out. And if only they'd bought at these plus areas. Then as the market gets to around plus three, the price starts to really get active. There's a sharp lift as the fear of losing out gets too much for a lot of traders. And this, is, and this is the social proof as well, which causes a flurrying of buying activity. Suddenly the markets are quickly swamped by the market makers taking the other side and the market drops back into an accumulation area. Large numbers of traders are now literally trapped because their trades are out of the money. That is, the price is now lower than where the flurry of buying activity took place. Now the markets have you, have, market makers have you exactly where they want you. You will not close the trade and take a small loss, realising you have made an error. Rather, you will place a stop loss around the plus one level in the hope that the market eventually goes up. Now, the longer this continues, the more and more traders will place tighter and tighter stops out of fear of losing. The market makers have managed to control a very large volume of orders. Now, all they have to do is quickly drive the market down through the plus two area, which will have the effect of triggering all the sell stops from the traders that bought. As the stop loss orders are triggered, the market makers take the other side, buying all the sell stops. The market makers have, in one swift move, accumulated huge quantities of stock. This rapid buying turns the market back up, and the outside traders rush in to buy. Who sells the buy orders to them? You got it, the market makers. They are now selling stock back into the rise at higher prices, thus relieving, releasing vast profits on the way. 
When will you buy and sell? The fact is, regardless of what any trader will tell you, they will not buy or sell until something happens, and that something has got very little to do with price. This something is the birth of a belief that now is the time the trader is going to succeed. Now this trade is going to produce a profit. The trader will not be able to push the buy or sell button until that belief is born. Now what we can draw from this is that at the back of every order is the birth of a belief in success. The market makers are masters at creating beliefs about future price. This then bleeds through to the effect the price either up or down. It's easy to get a crowd to look up in the sky for something that's not there. Now what we can now further draw from this is that markets are not price driven but rather belief driven. Rather than trying to predict price, which is very difficult, we can start to think like the market makers, we can start to use their business model and observe how they manipulate beliefs. Now we can start to think and act like the market makers, now the odds are 3 to 1 in our favour. In this video you learned about the keep playing rules, the structure of the love movie and how that relates to every market move. You also revisited the all-important accumulation and manipulation cycle. In the next video, video 7, you're going to see how we'll be riding along with the big players for maximum profits. You will learn what the profit release looks like and how to join in on that for those maximum profits. You'll also discover to the answer to the big question, what's in the box? Well, no need to say more here because you are fast approaching the finish line. So let's get on with video 7 right away.